Good afternoon, and I hope you through I do this every time. I think I've stopped the doggone intro, but apparently I didn't. <laughs> so, how y'all doing? It's sorry for my voice. I have a little frog in my throat. I was uh talking loudly, obviously, last night, but welcome to How Betty Davis Saved My Life, Life Lessons from Classic Hollywood. I'm Moya. And I'm Georgia. And we are so happy to be with you today. Yes, we are uh, off schedule. Normally, we do go, um, we do our lives on Saturdays, our audios, um, everything is on Saturday. All our, all, our, all of our audios um, are usually um uploaded on Saturdays, but we're just doing something a little different today because Georgia will be going on vacay, baby. And so she wanted to get this one, this move, this movie under her belt. And so we're here on Sunday. So she's, she's a very, very popular lady and she, she could only pencil me in today, guys, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes think my fan club could fit in a phone booth. Remember what those were, people? Right. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Well, Moya, are you ready to kick off your Sunday shoes? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday. It's definitely Sunday. And that's so ironic, huh? Because he does, Ken, the great Kenny Loggins do, does say that. And no, Sunday is super chill day, so... But I'm, you know, the show must go on, guys. So yes, Georgia, Footloose, girl. So why did you want to do Footloose? So guys, I've never seen it, never ever seen. It. So this movie is what thirty nine years. Yeah, old? yeah. Never, I, Boya, you are a Footloose virgin. I cannot believe that. I am. I am a Footloose virgin. Virgin, and look, I can't even get that word out. That's a joke, but we're not gonna touch it. Um, but yes. I, and so Georgia's like, no, we have to do Footloose. So Georgia, we're going to get into it, homegirl. Let's do Footloose. So um, while Georgia's talking, I do have some clips. And uh, go ahead, Georgia. You can start whenever you want, my dear. Okay. Yeah, this movie was a cultural phenomenon. And it came in the seventh highest grossing movie of... Uh, the year that it was made back in 1984. And believe it or not, the box office, we recently did another dance movie, Dirty Dancing. And that movie actually grossed 65 million, Footloose grossed 80 million. <laughs> and this is the movie that launched Kevin Bacon's star. Yeah, let's um, <laughs> Because he had done a few movies before that, right? Like, um, I, uh, what was the... What, what, he what, did what, what, Animal that? House, and okay. he also did Diner before this one. Oh, I was thinking he did that other movie. Maybe I'm getting him confused with somebody else. Okay, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get into the plot, and then also a little bit into the actual um, casting and, and, and so forth. Um, first of all, I just want to say this. Everybody, turn off your brain, okay? <laughs> this is not going to be, if you came today wanting to listen to Ingmar Bergman or Fellini, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> okay, we'll do Citizen Kane another time. Right. But today, this is about pure fun. Yeah. So, okay. Now, this has some great music uh, by Kenny Loggins, who also, of course, you know him. He did the music for Top Gun. Um, so it's got some, uh, of course, the title song, Put Loose. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Let's Hear It for the Boy. Uh, we've got Holding Out for a Hero, Waiting for a Girl Like You, Dancing in the Streets, Almost Paradise, I'm Free. So this is loaded with some great music. Right. Uh, and so it'll take you, it'll transport you right back to the late, to the 80s. Uh, yeah, you're going to see all the fat, all the, the, this is not a great fashion movie. No, no. <laughs> you, you're going to see the hairdos that are like plastered with like about a gallon of Aquanet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, right. it's not, not really a good fashion movie. But anyway, so 
there's a little bit behind the casting of this movie because originally, well, starting with the director, Ron Howard was asked to direct, but instead he decided to do the movie Splash. Oh. Um, yeah. And uh, Tom Cruise uh, was expected to star in the lead role, but he he went because of his famous dance and his tidy whities he impressed the casting wow. directors but he went on to make all the right moves instead yeah so they were going to do rob Lowe. rob Lowe had the dancing ability he'd auditioned three times but he was injured so it prevented him from taking the part so yes kevin bacon was offered the main role for the stephen king movie christine which they thought he was going to do but he decided to take a huge risk, audition for Footloose, and the rest is history. Also, the role of um, the preacher's kid, Ariel, Madonna tried out for the role, but she was not, obviously, she didn't make the cut. They also considered Valerie Bertinelli and Jennifer Jason Lee, but they, they didn't. Do you they, think that was a good idea, not casting Madonna? I'm going to say yes. Although I think she could have done it. Yeah, I think she could have done it. But in a way, yeah, I, I kind of think it was. Um, so I, I think that um, letting Kevin Bacon be cast, let him shine. I think Madonna may have been a little overpowering, maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe. So, yeah. Um, the movie was filmed in Utah, so you're seeing beautiful snow-capped mountains in the background. Um, the story is loosely based on the town of Elmore City, Oklahoma, true story. There had been a ban on dancing since its founding in 1898 because they wanted to decrease the amount of heavy drinking. And uh, all the way up until 1980, the town had never had a high school prom. And the town made national news when the school board voted to overturn the ban just barely and the school board president said let them dance <laughs> that's girl okay <laughs> i'm glad somebody got a hustle out of it they made you know somebody made some coins off of it because i kept i didn't know that till like just recently like it was actually based off of something um that really happened and I was, I kept saying, where in the 80s could you not freaking dance after like American Bandstand and Soul Train and the Tammy Show, you know, all this great music. What? It's, it just seemed really preposterous to me. I know, but you know, back in the 1950s, they thought Elvis was subversive with his dancing. Remember, they would only film him on the Ed Sullivan show from the waist up. And so they thought, <laughs> it's going to corrupt the morals of America. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, to get into the actual plot of the movie. Okay. Now, the biggest weak point is the story, but who cares when it's this fun? Okay, so we have a high school student from Chicago. He moves to a small town where, unbelievably, dancing and rock and roll music are prohibited. What madness is this? As Moya says. Okay, so no one trusts the new kid in spite of his charmingly boyish smile, and he is met with opposition wherever he goes. This is a David and Goliath story. And uh, this town has bigger problems than kids doing the moonwalk, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the story has a very dazzling, uproariously fun ending that you cannot miss. I Absolutely. Um, and I'll try to show some um, clips. We'll put the um, sound down to... Uh... So Georgia, why do you love this movie so much? Because you're like, oh, you know, um, what you know, what does it do or did for you? Well, first of all, I like any movie with dancing in it. I just love dance movies. The second reason is I think that dancing is a joyous, liberating experience, and I think dancing is another way of expressing the fullness of life. And I think we were meant to dance, right. and um, I think that. Um, it's just meant to be fun. And I think there are parts of the movie to me that just really crack me up. 
I mean, the <laughs> playing chicken on tractors. Oh, come on. Oh, my God. That's, the, you know, and then the kids are all riding around, you know, without on their motorcycles with no helmets. So when was flash dance? Do you know? I, and I should have looked it up. I totally, it had to be around the same time. It was. It was. Okay. Yeah, there were the three big dance movies, Flash Dance, Dirty Dancing, and of course, this one, Footloose. They're all done pretty close to the same time around. You're right, Moya. Okay, because I, so, so was, and fame, like I said, fame. So was that like, that was like a hot um, idea, like uh, teenagers dancing or something like that? Like that, was that like a hot idea in Hollywood at the time? I guess. Is that safe to say? Yeah, it was. I, okay. Yeah, you, yeah. It, that was a cultural thing going on. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so, I mean, they really wanted to use, like, the top people, and they felt that dancing was just another way of, like, big box office with some of these big stars. And if they had some dancing ability, they were going to go with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and <clears throat> and Laura, the movie is thirty nine years old, um, but the premise of them outlawing the dancing in the movie was because, and I and I don't appreciate this because a lot of times Hollywood paints Christians as uh, either lunatics or so hard nosed that we do not have fun and funny, you know, just so ultra, like ultra conservative, like to, to, to like, we're just hard asses for lack of better term, I won't curse, but you know what I mean? And so they, they really do us a disservice. So, you know, it was birthed out of, uh, in a movie, a tragedy, Laurie's brother died and, you know, that's always hard for a family. So her, her, Dad John Lithgow's character took a hard line on fun, really on on fun. But um, I found this move. I said this ain't nothing but rebel without a cause dancing. Now, I, I, did you get a rebel without a cause? I don't know if you saw, had seen that. Had seen yes, that. Moya, I did think of that when I was watching this movie. I thoroughly did. Okay. Very similar to Rebel Without a Cause. But one of the things that I like about the characterizations in this movie is the Ren character himself, because I thought he was, um, you know, very down to earth. He was cool without being macho. And he showed a gentleness and a maturity, which I a lot of people really responded to in this movie. And he was very rational in the way he handled things. But he wanted to show everybody, you know, there's, we can have a good time. And he, he w tried to work within the system. Right. Uh, I also uh, liked the Willard character because I thought he had good insight and he could really read people. And, you know, I th liked the way that the dad wasn't just this one note, you know, fuddy duddy. I mean, you have some self-expression and personal freedom. It would have brought on, I think, the emotional and spiritual healing that they all really needed and could have used. Yeah, and I, I'm so glad you said that, Georgia, about trauma, unresolved trauma. We've done several movies, um, The Palm Broker, about how unresolved tr trauma mutates into, I mean, just so so many different types of manifestations of unhealthy uh, behavior. It, it, it never goes well unless it is resolved discussed and resolved in a healthy and open manner no matter how egregious the traumatic experience is it helps for it to be processed in a healthy environment and so you're so right i'm glad you say that because it on, on the face of it it looks like it's just a silly movie but it did have a lot of very relevant themes from not only then and really now because we, we talk more now about trauma we talked more. There was a a a, a, a scene of um, Lori Singer's character Ariel and her boyfriend had a, a they had a fight fight, <laughs> you know, and whether you agree about who started, who's right, and all that, but um, but that's relevant today about uh, I, I'm gonna say domestic violence, but I mean they weren't married, they weren't out in the house or anything, but let's just call it domestic violence, and uh, who's at fault? when to walk away, uh, destruction of property. So really a lot of deep, deep, deep issues.
shoes in here that I was shocked because, like I said, never saw it. All I saw they just danced and had a great sound track, which was nominated for an Oscar, the soundtrack. Um, so let's, because we're kind of running out of time. Georgia, let's kind of briefly touch on that or, or, or get all your points out, but let's not forget to talk about the soundtrack. Oh, for sure. Yeah, um, the soundtrack was just, I mean, had so many great hits in it. Um, but I have to tell a little story before we go about Moya, a little Footloose episode with Moya. One of our coworkers spotted Moya in a ah! in the aisle of a grocery store. Yes. And Moya was busting a move. Let me tell you, yes. Moya was just, she was just getting with the music. She was just dancing. <laughs> yes. All <laughs> oh, oh, true. I, I had to stop myself from, from twerking. But it, 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 it and I can't remember what, cause you know sometimes in, in the stores, uh, especially over here, I guess, girl, they'll put on like they'll put they'll put on like obscure funk music, like in the Walmart near me. They'll they'll put on near me. They'll put on like Shaka Khan, like, and, and not like her, um, no no. They'll put like Rufus and Shaka Khan on, and and I'm done. I'm like I don't care who's watching, or like they'll put B, the Bee Gees on. And I can't remember who it was, but you're right, George. I sure did have a footloose moment. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to have several more, God willing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, to address the the music that Moya was referring to, um, the two nominations were for Footloose with, that was done by Kenny Loggins, and also Denise Williams did Let's Hear It for the Boy. Those were the two big ones, but let's not forget there was like Bonnie Tyler. Um, she did um, Hold Hold Out the Hero, and then there was also Waiting for a Girl Like You, Dancing in the Street. Song. Oh my lord! I, 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 I didn't know that came. I didn't know I'm Waiting for a Girl. I didn't know that came from Footloose. I love that song. Yeah, I know. It's so much great music came from Footloose. Yeah, and um, <laughs> shout out to the late great George Duke who produced. Let's hear it for the boy. And he hated that song. Hated that song. He didn't want to do it. And he wasn't going to do it. And um, Denise Williams tells the story. And so she went over his head to his boss, who was his wife, <laughs> according to her. And she made him do it. She's like, look, just do it. Get it over with. You're going to get paid and just move on. You know, Denise, she's, she's going to knock it out of the park. So George Duke did it under duress. Thought it was like he hated the song. And George Duke, for those of you who are uh, music aficionados, he's worked with everyone from Michael Jackson to, I mean, just the best of the best. So, and unfortunately, we lost him, um, oh gosh, maybe about 19 years ago. But anyway, so yeah, he, and that's always how these, these songs are sometimes serendipitous. Like, they didn't want to do the song, hate the song. Like, Tina Turner couldn't stand What's Love Got to Do With It. And what, what is she mainly known for? One of her biggest hits. So yeah, um, Girl, Almost Paradise. With um, and I always get them. Is it Ann Wilson from Heart? I always get the sisters mixed up. But um, the the lead singer for Heart and a guy from um, uh, yeah, I don't get mad with my cat. I just he just just escaped me. I love that song. No, no, that's not in here, is it? That's in Top Gun, Almost Paradise, or is that in this? It's this in this movie. movie? Okay, I'm getting confused. It, right. No, it, it's Almost Paradise is in this movie, Footloose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I thought so. I don't know why my brain cramps. Um, but there's a song similar in, in, but you know, so when was Top, Top Gun was not too far from this either, huh? I don't think so. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was eighties, but maybe just a little bit later. Okay. Yeah. Because, um, that was an excellent soundtrack and Kenny Loggins. That's why I'm thinking of Top Gun. That's why Kenny Loggins, right. Danger Zone. Kenny was hot in the like. Late 70s, 80s. Girl, he could do no wrong. That man ain't never got to write another freaking song, does he? I agree with you, Moya. Boy. I love, love Kenny Loggins. Well, we are up against it. Check out Footloose. Um, uh, uh, it's it's on YouTube, but you have to um, buy or rent it. You, you can look at it on Amazon with a subscription. I think on Max or something like that. But, um... So yeah, Georgia, I, I'm not, oh girl. Okay. Wait, y'all just bear with us one more second. Huh. You know, I, I, I had totally forgot they did the remake. Do you know anything about the remake? Uh, uh, yeah, I do know a little bit about it. I think it was made in like maybe 2011. Yeah, yeah, you're had, right. 
had Julianne Hoff, and I just love her dancing, and I like her very much. But I heard that the movie, most people think it was a dud. Some people liked it better, but most people thought, no, 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 you couldn't capture the same kind of magic right. with, with this original one. Right, yeah, the, it, it flopped. And, and so that was a time, girl, well, we ain't going to get up on Hollywood because they, uh, you know, it is what it is. But um, but they were doing all those remakes. Remember around that same time they redid Nightmare on Elm Street? And that was a total dud. And I'm like, so when are you going to stop? When are you going to stop just ruining our, our memories of all these great movies and get an original thought in your head? Because... We, it, you cannot cap. That's that's when. And shout out to Ultimate Fashion History. Step back in the 70, um, 60s, 70s, 80s, and nineties. Silver Screen Oasis, Cinema Cafe, all these great groups. Um, we always mention them, and so many more. But when we were on last time with Tom and Norman, you cannot capture the same zeitgeist. There's only one Kevin Bacon and John Lithgow and. I wonder how the audience was it. I wonder was it as preposterous like you can't dance? I don't know anything about. It. Did they keep the same storyline? Do you know? I don't know if they did. Okay. Yeah, cause um, I mean, that was so idiotic. Anyway, um, Georgia, what else? I'm gonna give the last word before we get out of here. Well, Moya, the only way I know how to close out this podcast is just picture me right now with glitter falling from the sky on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had the picture up that the the prom, and let's dance, everybody dance, everybody dance. I don't want to get copyright struck, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it was a fun. I, I, Georgia was touch and go for me because I kept sitting there in my 2023 mind. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with dancing? I'm like, you know, and but then like then I found out like I said it was real, a real this really happened, but um. It was Footloose, guys. For those who are also Footloose, Footloose virgins, it is deeper than it looks. Shockingly, shockingly, yeah. deeper yes. than it looks. More than meets the eye, to borrow a phrase from the Transformers. Well, guys, we're going to get out of here. We enjoyed our special edition of How Better Davis Saved My Life, Life Lessons from Classic Hollywood. I'm Moya. And I'm Georgia. And we look forward to seeing you next time. I will, before we get out, so whilst George is on our vacay, I will, we're going to still do our um, live, but it's going to be more focused on, I have a ton of later the parties that I need to get to. So, and you know, I, I can't, I can't do anything without my girl. Um, Norman Tom said it might come back and do some of them, some of, uh, cause we have a long list of how better David saved my life movies. So we might have some special guests come in and sit in for Georgia. So make sure you do not miss us every, not every Saturday. Uh, maybe I, I, I'll have the, the schedule up and I sh should have it in front of me right now, but this kind of Sunday kind of threw me off. But it's Saturdays at 1 p.m. Not every Saturday, 1 p.m. at Central Standard Time. Let me look at the calendar real quick, guys, to let you know the next time we will be live. So the next time that we will actually be live. So y'all going to get uh, I'm going to have a special because on the 16th, so next Saturday, you're going to have a back-to-back -back live. So, yes, on the 16th, we will be live again. It'll be a late to the party. I promise you, you know, we have a lot of fun when I do those segments. So, uh, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, next Saturday, the 16th, we will go live again. And and, and we'll, um, we're waiting for Georgia to come back with bated breath. So, guys, thank you again for hanging out with us and don't forget that the audio podcast will be um will probably be uh uploaded on the 23rd um uh, of this month and um, if my dates are wrong i apologize because i'm trying to i'm looking at the calendar but i'm trying to you know get it off the top of my head as well thank you guys so much